So in this final little cleanup lesson that we've got, what I want to deal with is something that I've, I've kind of ignored throughout the process of this course, and that is what to do with our old libs folder. So if you remember the libs folder was something that we were installing in our old Angular JS application using Bower. So this is Bower JSON file here. Now, even though we've moved over to using um, NPM and uh, node modules for all these modules, one of the things we never dealt with was that in the index.html file, you can see if you look closely, you can see the links, the source, the CSS files that we're loading in. Actually, a lot of them are coming from the libs folder. Now, this isn't great practice anyway, even with a, an Angular JS application. Really, we should have been using some form of bundler or, or some, full of, some form of build tooling which could combine all of those into one file. But we never use that in our Angular JS application. It never felt right to me to tell you to start using the change the path to, to node module. Because I, th I think whenever I see a site and it's loading stuff from node modules, that's a really bad form and it's really bad security issues as well. And because the real way to solve this problem, the real way is to use a bundler, use something which combines all of these CSS files into one, or to do something a little bit more clever than what we're doing right now. But we are using a bundler, we're using a bundler called Webpack, and we're using that for all of our uh, JavaScript code, but we can also use Webpack to bundle our CSS code. Now, I left this discussion to now till the end of the course because actually this is a pretty involved step and it actually has absolutely nothing to do with the migration of AngularJS to Angular. It literally has only to do with the migration of my demo application because you and your AngularJS application might already be using some form of bundling solution for your CSS. I I'm betting that you are. But for completeness and for this project and perhaps just to show you how to do it, I'm going to show you how to use Webpack to bundle all of our CSS files and start using the ones from node modules as well. And that way we can get rid of all of our references to Bower. So let's just be pretty aggressive with this. I'm going to remove all the Bower files. I'm going to remove Bower RCC. I thought I did just remove that. What did I remove? Oh, I seem to have two of them. I removed two of them. And then Bower JSON. Let's remove those. And then also, let's just go right ahead and just remove that libs folder. I don't need it anymore. And actually, I seem to have also left this templates folder here as well. We don't need those as well because we've moved everything over to using components. For, so for completeness, I'm going to remove those as well. So to use uh, Webpack with uh, SAS and, and CSS, we need to install a couple of modules. And I'm just going to install them. I'm going to ex explain to you what they do. So let's clear this here. And let's get some space. I'm going to npm install, sass loader, css loader, and style loader. So I'm going to add those and also node sass to our npm. And I'll explain what each of those do. So node sass is the actual command line tool which compiles sass to CSS. I shall explain the rest as I build up the Webpack configuration. So in the Webpack config here, I'm going to do a couple of extra things. I'm going to go back down to loaders, and we've got a loader for our TypeScript file, but I'm also now going to add a loader for something that's called rules now as well, actually, but loaders just works just as well. So I'm going to add a loader for our SAS file, so for our SCSS files. Let me just get this rendered nicely. Okay. And one more here. Okay. So what this will do is if when it encounters a SAS file, it will first, well, essentially use these loaders with it. Now the SAS loader at the end, this is what will use the node SAS to compile the SAS into CSS. The CSS loader will then figure out how to bundle that CSS inside the JavaScript file, because if you remember here, we're actually bundling out into a JS file here. And then the style loader is then will, when it sees that CSS, when the JavaScript loads, will actually add it as a style tag to our application. I'm going to show you this when we run it so you can see a little bit more information. But that's all we need to do here. Apart from, we now need to add two entry points to our application. So we've got one entry point, which is the main.ts, but we can actually have this as an array. And the other entry point I want to have is this SAS file main scss. So I think that is source css 
main.scss. There we go. So I think that should be all that we need as a basic, as a basis. Yes, yeah, so I've installed the NPM modules and I have uh, added the extra entry point. If you look at our main, it's not really doing anything. It's, 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 it's not importing anything. It's just got some, some styles that we need in our application. So now let's run npm build in the right place here, npm run build. Okay, everything's built. And if we go into our application and I hit refresh, everything looks fine. Oh, there's one other thing, sorry, one other thing, just to make sure everything's working as we expect, because now we're bundling this CSS file, this main CSS file, we're bundling it in with the, with the bundle JS and now we shouldn't need it here. So that's another thing I should do here is I'll comment that out and I don't need to rebuild it for this. I should just be able to refresh. And I, I, I know this is working because one of the styles in that main CSS is to put some padding at the top there, which we have, but we can double check if you go inspect element. And you can see it is going to give us some errors because we're not loading in those CSS files. But if we now go into the head here, and if I expand it out, you can see at the bottom we have a style tag. And what it's doing is it's compiled that CSS, and then that style loader plugin for Webpack is, it's when it reads the CSS from when that bisbundle.js, it will literally add it as a style tag to the top of the page. So our CSS is being added as, as a style tag inline to the top of the page. And you can see here, it is actually commenting out the main.css. And although this is fine to use in development mode, we do have an issue. And that is that basically all of our styles are gonna be bundled in with the JavaScript files. So you can see we stick our JavaScript files at the end of our application. So when the application loads, we then have to wait for the JavaScript file to load and then to be parsed and then for the style sheet to be, or for the style to be added as a style at the top. And this can sometimes lead to just a little bit of a delay when you're loading an application from when the styles are applied, which is from, from a user perspective, isn't really that great. So what we tend to want to do is we still want to use Webpack, but at the end of the day, we actually want to still create a CSS file that we can put at the top of the file. Now to do that, it's pretty common. And to do that in Webpack, we use a plugin called the Extract Text plugin. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this plugin. So npm install extract text webpack plugin and it's gonna save dev. Okay, that looks good. Let me just close this out here so we have space to play around with. And I'm gonna do a couple of things. So on the top of the page, I'm going to require our new plugin. I'm gonna call it extract text plugin. And then I'm gonna create an instance of this plugin at the top with some parameters. So the file name I want to extract to is a source disk bundle.css. And actually, if I specify the node environment to development, I want to disable this. So basically, in development, I may just want to have this uh, running uh, in the old way with just a JavaScript file. But in production, I definitely want to output a CSS file so I can extract it in. So then we also need to change this little provider, this little um, loader at the bottom from this style. We now need to do a little bit more and we need to add this style here. So again, when it's a SAS file, we're going to use that extract text plugin and it's kind of doing the same thing. We're gonna use a CSS loader and SAS loader. And, but now we don't really want to use a style loader because we want it to essentially not add as a style tag because we're gonna explicitly add a CSS file here, bundle CSS. But you know, if it's not working, we, we want to fall back in development to using the old style loader. And the last thing we need to do is in plugins, we just need to add that to our list of plugins there. So that should be kind of pretty much a fairly awesome basic webpack configuration which we can use. So now the next thing we need to use, we need to actually leverage this bundle CSS in our index.html. So let's open that up. I think it's here. There we go. So I'm just gonna uncomment that and I'm gonna do bundle.css. Gonna add that in there and that's gonna be our main 
CSS file. And hopefully, we're just going to be adding these in or, or finding alternatives for these and kind of bun adding them into the bundle one here. But let's just make sure this is working for now. Actually, it's this, not CSS bundle, this bundle CSS. So now let's build this. Okay, that's looking good. Looks like it's built. And if you scroll to the top, you can see now, maybe you didn't see this before, but before it had something that said bundle JS and it was outputting this bundle size, this JavaScript bundle. And now we're also outputting this CSS file here. Okay. So if we look in our dist folder, we should now see a bundle at CSS, which is our CSS file compiled from SAS and bundle JS or JavaScript file. Let's now have a look at that. That can get quite big. So now let's close this out. And I'm just going to refresh this. And it looks like it's working just like before. And if we inspect element, let's look at element. And if you go to the top, you can see in the head, if we scroll to the bottom, we don't, this is just an empty style tag. We don't have that style tag before where I where it was injecting it in manually via the style loader. In, instead, we are we are just getting those styles from the bundle CSS file that we loaded in. Okay, good start. So now we've kind of got a solution where we have figured out how to add in our styles or how to kind of add a main.css and main, main.sass to our build process, have it all bundled together and output in a bundle CSS. Now let's actually start going through our index.html. We need to find solutions for all of these CSS files. So we need to kind of either add them in or find other solutions. Now there's a couple of things here. One of them is a mistake, I'd say, in my application. I'm loading both Bootstrap CSS and Paper CSS. So Paper.css already includes Bootstrap CSS. So it's, it's kind of a necessary dual loading there. But there's a couple of different things. I think with Bootstrap 3, which is what we're using here, it's a lot more difficult to use that. It's possible, a lot more difficult to use that with Webpack. I think it's a lot easier to use Bootstrap 4 with Webpack because it's more modern and it kind of matches and Webpack is more modern. With Bootstrap 3, the best thing I found to do is to use a CDN. Now, I think that's fine. I think it's fine to use a CDN with very, very commonly used CSS files. You probably wouldn't make sense to use some of this stuff with a CDN because it's used a lot less commonly and therefore there'd be a lot less chance of that CDN being cached. But Bootstrap is so popular, I'd argue you always want to use a CDN version of Bootstrap. Now, the one you want to use is actually Bootswatch. So this paper.css, if you remember, I don't know if you remember actually, well, I never told you, unless you took my Angular 1 course, you'd never know what I'm using for Bootstrap. I'm using a theme called paper from Bootswatch. This one. So I'm using this, it's kind of a Bootswatch, which is very, very popular uh, themes for, for Bootstrap. And it's got a couple of really popular ones. You, you've probably been using these over the years. This is the one we're using here. And you can grab kind of the, the, the CSS files for that here. But you can also use Bootswatch with the Bootstrap CDN platform. And that's fairly straightforward. You basically can grab the CSS by just putting in Bootswatch, the version number, the type of the theme that you want, and then Bootstrap file here. And it gives you the Bootstrap file that you want to use. So that's the one that's what we're going to use just for this first one here. And just because it makes sense I think to use a CDN. It is possible to do it with Webpack. It does. It is just quite. It does require quite a few steps, and I don't want to go through all of those steps because really we're focusing here on migrating Angular JS, not on figuring out how to use Webpack. But I honestly think this is a, a good solution, a good compromise here. So that's there now. Also, Bootstrap Editions. We don't need that anymore. We're doing using that for one of the date pickers. Now we're using the standard. Uh, HTML5 date picker, so we don't need that anymore. We do need a solution for toaster, so you can see here we're using the old toaster CSS, which will actually work just as fine with the Angular toaster, Angular 2 toaster, but we, now we really should find a solution for this properly. And the solution, if you actually go into the toaster, the toaster 2 code, you can see it's actually got the recommendation here, so you can import the CSS into your SAS file with just this text here. So if we go back, into here and then we're going to go back into the main.sas file and at the top i'm going to add that color and that's basically some sas command which is going to import all of our all of the toaster sas into our sas file now one of the advantages of using webpack is that it kind of knows or understands node modules so in fact if you just typed in tilde 
it knows to go into the node modules folders. That's a nice uh, shortcut for that. Now let's make sure that's working. And also to make sure it's working, let's remove it from here. So now if we see the toaster functioning, we can know the CSS can only be coming from our compiled uh, CSS from the main SAS file. Cool. Now let's go into back into application. I'm going to hit refresh. It's looking good. So hopefully, there we go. So we know that the CSS for this toaster is now coming from our application and not, not the CSS that we're loading in. So if I go into head, you can see here, I don't, or you shouldn't see here, the CSS for toaster. Awesome. A couple more things we need to do. If we go look at the bottom, we've also got Font Awesome. Font Awesome is again one of those things that is so, so popular on the internet that I argue it's a lot better to use a CDN for that. Okay, because anything you use with a CDN is going to be cached, more likely be cached by your ISP. This is going to be far more performant than just including in manually yourself or bundling it in manually yourself. So Font Awesome, that's how I would solve that one. I don't need to re rebuild this one. I can just show you that working. So you can see here, here we go. We've got the Font Awesome logo still appearing there. Excellent. And now let's have a look at this ladder. So we had ladder, the ladder buttons that we had before. Again, this is pulling it in from the old Bower install of ladder. Now we want to use the new install of ladder. And again, we're using Angular 2 ladder. So let's have a look at what that documentation says about CSS. So if we scroll down. You can see it's got some links here for the CSS. And again, it's got another one here that we can import into our SAS file. So let's go back into here. Let's open up my SAS file, main SAS. I'm going to do the same at the top. And again, as I said before, I can replace node modules with tilde. So now if I just run build. Excellent. So that looks pretty good. And again, let's go into my index.css. Let's remove that ladder there. And now hopefully that's everything that we should need in order to have that functioning. Oh, just to make sure it is functioning, let's go into one of our components, our purse, I think a card component, and let's set is deleting for the ladder attribute to true, just so we can make sure the ladder is functioning, because it's difficult to see really, especially if I'm recording it. It might not come through in the frame rate that makes sense for you. So now if I go here and I hit refresh, there you can see now with the spinner, you know that ladder is functioning and the CSS is being loaded in just fine. Let me undo that and rebuild. Okay, so now the CSS, I think, is now looking pretty good. We've cleaned it all up. We're now using some CDNs and we're bundling the rest in our own CSS file. I've removed the libs folder and uh, the other, all the bow references. Now let's kind of clean up a couple more things. We're not using main.css anymore, so let's just trash that. And again, this paper CSS, we're now using the CDN version of that. And I think, I believe we are now 100% completely done. Let's triple check, let's build the application. Let's go, let's refresh. And yeah, we're looking very good. We can edit. Let's make sure we can still edit. We can, we can delete, and we can create. Yeah, so we're still, we're working really well and uh, the application is functioning and we've now migrated completely from AngularJS over to Angular.